The Bible makes it clear that we as believers are to honor and obey governing authorities. Everyone must submit to governing authorities, for all authority comes from God. And those in positions of authority have been placed there by God. So anyone who rebels against authority is rebelling against what God has instituted and they will be punished. For the authorities do not strike fear in people who are doing right, but in those who are doing wrong. Would you like to live without fear of the authorities? Do what is right and they will honor you. The authorities are God's servants sent for your good. But if you are doing wrong, of course you should be afraid for they have the power to punish you. They are God's servants sent for the very purpose of punishing those who do what is wrong. So you must submit to them, not only to avoid punishment, but also to keep a clear conscience. That's Romans chapter 13, verses one through five. Now, Romans 13 is specifically referring to situations where the government is enforcing just and moral laws. For the scripture says, they are God's servants sent for the very purpose of punishing those who do what is wrong. By obeying the laws of the land, we keep a clear conscience. Only those who do what is wrong should fear the government. But what happens when doing what is right is prohibited by a governing authority? What are we to do when the government itself becomes corrupt or puts laws into place that are anti-biblical? There are actually several examples in scripture of civil disobedience. The Hebrew midwives disobeyed Pharaoh's order to murder baby boys. They disobeyed the law of the land. That's Exodus chapter one, verse 17. Obadiah hid the prophets of God from Jezebel. In doing so, he obviously disobeyed the governing authority. That's 1 Kings chapter 18, verse four. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego disobeyed the laws of the land that commanded them to bow to and worship a statue of the king. That's Daniel chapter three. The early church disobeyed the laws of the land simply by proclaiming the gospel. Then they brought the apostles before the high council where the high priest confronted them. We gave you strict orders never again to teach in this man's name, he said. Instead, you have filled all Jerusalem with your teaching about him and you want to make us responsible for his death. But Peter and the apostles replied, we must obey God rather than any human authority. That's Acts chapter five, verses 27 to 29. Even today, persecuted churches around the world meet in underground services, and they do so at the risk of their own lives. It is clear from both scripture and church history that whenever the church is faced with the decision to obey God's word or the government's laws, we are to choose obedience to God's word and that's not always easy. The right thing to do isn't always clear. Programmed, hypnotized mobs and masses of people wag their fingers at anyone willing to stand up for truth. So that adds pressure to your decision. Thinking themselves virtuous for repeating the popular opinions of the day, many well-meaning people actually become a hindrance to the truth. They say, you're setting a bad example, but shouldn't our example be to obey God? They say, you're going to cause us to lose what freedoms we do have. But if the exercise of a freedom can cause me to lose it, is it really a freedom? What then would be the point of having that freedom if I'm not free to carry it out without losing it? They say, love your neighbor. Is standing for truth not loving? Disobedience toward the word of God, whether done in the name of love, convenience, or even safety, is ultimately still disobedience. My point is simple. We ought to work with and honor governing authorities, even in the difficult to navigate circumstances. But when a clear line is crossed, and please hear me on this, that line must be clear. Then we must be willing to respectfully resist. As much as is possible, work together with governing authorities. But if their hands become so heavy that we cannot move, if their demands become so unreasonable that we cannot practice all of God's commands, then it is time for action. It's simple. If ever there's a conflict between what we are commanded to do in scripture and what we are commanded to do by a government, we are to obey the word of God always, no exceptions. Let us not trade obedience in the name of safety and peace. Let us not act in fear and call it wisdom. I'm David Diga Hernandez, and that is your moment of truth.
For more free teachings like this, sign up to my emailing list by going to davidhernandezministries.com slash email. When you sign up, you'll receive an email from me on a weekly basis, and every week I will send you a brand new teaching that will help to bless your life and help you to grow spiritually. You can sign up. It's 100% free. Again, go to davidhernandezministries.com slash email. By the way, when you do sign up, I'm also going to send you several free digital downloads. Again, davidhernandezministries.com slash email. Thank you for watching Encounter TV. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell. Also, help us spread the gospel of Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit. Make a one-time donation or become a monthly supporter by clicking on the donate link now.